Now we are going to get into this impact gun and I'm going to give a more detailed explanation and a deeper disassembly. So I'm going to get into the motor, all of the pieces of the motor, and explain how it works as well as getting into the hammering device and explain its operation as well. I've now removed all of the bolts from the back cap of the motor. I'll now take it apart and explain all of the pieces in detail and go through the actual operation of the air motor itself. So we have the front motor housing, which has two purposes, basically. It supports the front of the rotor, which is this piece, and it also has some ports in it and passages, which I will explain when I'm explaining how the motor actually works. We have the motor housing, which has some ports in it that transfer air to the front motor housing or plate. We have the inlet for the forward position we have the index hole and the inlets for the reverse position. And it also interacts with the vanes or the fiber plates. And it has the exhaust ports out the bottom of it, which the air flows out once it has done its work. We have the indexing pin that locks everything together. We've got the rotor itself with a splined shaft on it, and we've got the rear motor housing and bearing. The rotor itself is what turns and actually does the work. The fiber discs or vanes are what engage with the air to actually turn the rotor. In our case, the rotor is pressed into a bearing that is attached to the rear motor housing or rear motor plate. And so I'm not going to take that off because it is essentially the same as the front motor plate, with the exception that it has the inlet ports on it. The rear cap has a couple of purposes. It has this directional changer on it and it has some ports and chambers and now that I've explained all the pieces I will now go through an explanation of how the air motor actually works. For the purpose of this video we will talk about it as though the air gun is in the forward position. So the air comes in through the inlet and is stopped by the valve when I pull the trigger or depress the trigger, the air comes in through the inlet port and travels into the back of the air gun, which is this piece. The air travels through this port, and when the air gun is in the forward position, travels into this chamber. The indexing pin holds the motor locked in place like so. This chamber is lined up with this port and so the air flows in through the rear motor housing into this port. Once the air travels into that port, this is where things start to get a little bit complicated. If we take a look at the rotor installed into the motor housing, we can see that the vanes or the fiber plates are not actually engaged with the motor housing. If we blew air in through this passage now, it would simply rush out even if the front cap was on. The air would simply rush out through the exhaust holes and it wouldn't make anything spin. These plates 
have to be stuck out so that the air forces them to turn before it exits out through the exhaust. So this is where it gets a little bit complicated, but now that I've explained that, it should be easy to understand. When the air comes in through the back ports, there is a tiny hole in the back motor cover here, and in the front motor cover here. Now the opposite side is just for the re reverse positioning of the motor. So we have two intake ports, one is for forward and one is for reverse. The same goes for this side. We've got forward, or sorry, forward and reverse. So when the air flows into the motor through this port, it travels down in through this orifice. I'm not sure if the camera can pick that up, but there's a tiny orifice there. And it flows down into that orifice or port. And it also travels through these holes to the other side of the motor. And when it travels to the other side of the motor, it goes in through these holes and down through that little orifice or port and into this chamber. So on each end of the motor, or each end of the rotor, we have ports where air is flowing down and essentially what it does, it's coming out around here which you see is very close to the center of the shaft on the rotor. So what it does, when the air rushes into here, it actually pushes out on these fiber plates. When it pushes out on the fiber plates, it causes them to engage with the housing. You can see the port has a relief area cut here and a relief area cut here. We pull the trigger and the air rushes in through here. Some of that air goes in underneath the veins and pushes the veins into the wall of the motor housing. Some of that air bypasses here and here and forces the fins to move so that the air can escape out through the exhaust. Once they're engaged with the housing, the air that is coming in through these ports has no choice but to rotate the rotor before it can escape through the exhaust. A quick overview of what's happening. It's a little bit complicated to explain, especially in video format, but essentially the air flows in through these passages in the back and tries to escape through the exhaust. Before it can escape out the exhaust, it has to push on these fiber plates which causes the rotor to rotate. If you guys have any questions about the air motor or about anything else really, feel free to ask. I'm going to move along now and explain the hammer mechanism in this tool. So we'll quickly pull the front off of this gun and I will show you the components and the basic operation. So we've pulled the front off of the gun or the impact mechanism off of the front of the gun and so we'll set this aside now and we'll take a look at the actual impact or drive mechanism. We have a washer that retains some pins. We'll set that aside and then we will simply push on the output shaft and slide this all out. Now here we have some pins that should come out very easily. 
All of this stuff is made out of hardened steel, which is very hard. So we have our pins that work as rockers for the anvils. And we have, let's see here, our output shaft. And then we have our two anvils. We have a cage or housing. So now that I've taken this all apart and showed you guys the pieces, I will put it back together and try to give you an explanation of how it works. So now I've taken apart the hammer assembly or the impact assembly and I've put it back together with only one anvil in place. If we take a quick look at the anvil, we can see that we have a rounded surface and a hooked surface. Depending on what direction it is rotating in, the opposite side is hooked. So if we have, if we're rotating in a counterclockwise direction, we have the ramp side here and then it's hooked here. If we're rotating in a clockwise direction, we have the ramp on this side and then the hook side here. That is important in operation of this particular hammering mechanism. So when you pull the trigger, the motor rotates the cage of the impact assembly. We can see that there is a raised section on the output shaft. I'll pull the output shaft out so we can see. There is a raised section that has a sharp shoulder here and here as well. And there's two raised sections because there are normally two anvils. So I will reinstall this. The motor turns the cage and the raised section of the output shaft interferes with the ramp on the anvil. This pushes the anvil outward and the cage continues to rotate around building energy and storing that energy in the anvil. We rotate around and we can see that the hooked edge on the anvil right here is now approaching the shoulder of the output shaft or the shoulder of the raised section of the output shaft. When it gets to this point it contacts the output shaft or the raised shoulder of the output shaft and transfers its energy into your bolt or the output shaft into the socket. Once it transfers its energy in, it pops up and returns to center. We continue to rotate around and continue that process. As long as the motor is turning, the cage is turning, and that causes the ramp side to go up on the raised section of the output shaft, pushing the hammer outward. As we come around, we've got the hooked section of the anvil once again making contact with the raised section of the output shaft. This is turning very quickly and does this several times a second and there are also two hammers. So when this is assembled properly, we have two anvils traveling around, dispersing their energy by rotating and slamming into the output shaft. And that's one reason why it's very important for these tools to stay lubricated. And it's also a reason why these tools need to be made out of very high quality materials. These output shafts and anvils need to be made out of very hard material. So that is an in-depth explanation of how the hammering mechanism works. They do not all work exactly the same as this. So now that I've gone through and explained this in detail, if anybody has questions about this or needs me to clarify something, feel free to ask in the comments. I am now going to put this gun back together. We'll remove 
one of these pins, slide our anvil into place, slide the pin in, put the output shaft back in place, slide that all back into the housing, Get our washer before we forget. We'll set our washer. Oh, set our washer in place like so. We will set everything aside here, and now I will move those rags out of the way, and we'll put the air motor back together. It's easier to reassemble it this way, doing the air motor first. So that's how I will do it. This can be a little bit tricky to reassemble these, uh, especially after the gun has been dropped a few times and the shape of the housing isn't perfectly round. So I'll do my best to do this quickly and explain what I'm doing. We've got the front motor housing going into the housing of the gun. I've lined up the indexing hole with the body of the gun. We now have the outer motor housing, which also needs to be installed and indexed properly. Normally this would slide in with very little effort, but because this gun has been dropped a few times, it's had a hard life, the case of the motor is not the same shape that it used to be, not perfectly round, so it goes together with a little bit of effort. We'll just give this a couple taps with the end of my ratchet here. set it in place. I'll put the index pin in. Now we will take the rotor assembly with the vanes or fiber plates and the rear motor housing. We will slide that into place with the indexing hole like so. Next we will install the gasket which is homemade. I made this in one of my other videos. Install the back cover of the motor. Put the bolts in. Now that I've got the air motor part of this together, I will show you guys it in operation without the hammering mechanism attached. So we will move it into the forward position and pull the trigger. At first I will pull it slowly and let it turn over very, very slowly with not very much air passing through it. And it will sound funny. Each time you hear that popping noise, that is the air pushing one of the vanes past the exhaust port and the air forcing its way out. When I pull the trigger far, like this, that happens rapidly and the motor turns a lot faster. When I put it in reverse, we can see the motor will turn in the opposite direction. Forward, reverse. Now I will reinstall the hammer mechanism, or the drive mechanism.
hope you guys enjoyed and uh, if you do have questions about any of these tools and the operations or something that I said uh, please feel free to leave a comment if you guys want to see anything else I do have a nail gun I have an electric impact I have a little 12 volt DeWalt impact and I've got all sorts of other tools so if you want to see something specific you can leave a request in the comments and I'll see what I can do about making a video about it.